Okay. Oh. Hang on. Oh. I still need to move the camera. It's positioned against the desk and the desk moves around quite a bit. I thought I assembled it correctly, but weirdly the desk shakes quite a lot. Maybe I missed a screw somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Thank you, player. Thank you indeed, player Cetra. And welcome indeed, everyone. I hope you're having a nice Friday. Welcome to the end of your week. If you have any weekend plans, I hope they go very smoothly. So, <clears throat> so an update on what's happening on the YouTube video side of things. Once again, as I keep saying, um, after the fifth week of work, sorry that this is taking so long. I really don't mean for the YouTube videos to take forever. Oh, pardon me. But nevertheless, uh, we're on week number eight of this bullshittery. So the bullshittery is Divinity, part three. The continuation of that um, sort of Dungeons and Dragons, or at least Baldur's Gate style adventure um, with myself, Digby, Quebec, and Messiesi as we try to escape a place called Fort Joy. So we are prisoners uh, that have been sentenced to a concentration camp in the Divinity universe for the sin of using a type of magic that is outlawed for a very good reason. It causes demons to appear whenever it's utilized, so whoops. Anyway, so I'm doing part three, which is the changeover between chapters one and two of the storyline as we successfully escape the island. So the starting island and the surrounding territories, we successfully escape. So it's, uh, it's double the length of a typical bullshittery, so that's why it's taking so damn long. So week eight of ten is currently underway. In three days time, I should have the principal editing finished, which just means that everything should be keyframed and, um, you know, or everything should be in Adobe After Effects that should be. Uh, of course, there's still a lot more work to do after that. I've got to quality assure the video, so I've got to go through, render it, spot errors, redo sections that uh, perhaps didn't work so well. Um, yeah, so lots to do, lots to do indeed. Um, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna crack on with the uh, to the best of my ability, and um, yeah, that's it really. So just gonna. So too long didn't read as I'm on week 8 on the latest bullshittery of a probable 10. Any Factorio today? Probably not depressed. I played Factorio more or less all last weekend, so I'm a little bit I'm a little bit Factorioed out. Yeah. Sorry, I keep wobbling the desk. I need to move the camera. <coughs> right. Sorry, should I do that now? I keep I keep mentioning it, but then I don't actually do it. One minute. Lifting up the camera. How is everyone? Thank you, Plagiat. Thank you very much, Plagiat. Hang on. Okay. Just moving it over to the window so it's not attached to the desk. Oh, nice, Mad John. Well done. Well done, Mad John. Okay. Enjoy your chilling, laser random. Yes, what, what noise are you making? Let me do it. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry to hear it, nervous. Sucks, man. Hang on. There we go. Right. So, the camera is now back on the windowsill as opposed to the desk. There we go. So, I can move the desk and it won't do anything. Cool. Right. So, uh, yes, welcome indeed. I hope you're having a nice day today. So, let's get straight into RimWorld then. If you're not familiar with RimWorld, it's an adventure game. It's a top-down adventure game uh, quite similar to Dwarf Fortress, although I couldn't tell you the precise points of comparison. I've not played Dwarf Fortress, only in passing can I mention it. But nevertheless, we're playing as a group of tribespeople from a mole people tribe. So we have serious benefits, to serious bonuses, by being inside in the darkness. Now... Our tribe have just, we've just lost a member. We've just lost a tribal. 
Mardian was his name, and he died in battle against these god machines, strange synth synthetic creatures of, of, of just high-tech weaponry and blades. Um, so he died fighting them in the entrance here. Whilst we were all huddled around this doorway, trying to fight the robots as they entered, Mardian's arm was just out of the, the, the doorframe, so just not in full cover. And so one of them fired a shot which completely pulverized his arm, just destroyed it. There was little left but ragged um, uh, ribbons of meat and bone. And as he staggered back in agony, screaming, another shot hit him straight in the chest from the same robot. It completely cored him. It completely just blew out his inner torso, disintegrated his heart. We couldn't save him. No chance. He was dead instantly before before he even hit the ground. He was dead. Unfortunately, this was witnessed by Dr. Frosty, his fiance. So distraught is she that she's actually sedated. We've had to put her under sedation in the med bay. She's uh, extremely upset. So yeah, that sucks. They they were just uh yeah. So they they'd only just agreed to get married, and she was presumably planning their future together. A future that will never happen. So for now, I've moved... Well, I actually... Initially, I moved his body into this grave here. But we very quickly made a sarcophagus over here. And have moved him. Now, I've, I've got some sort of special prompt. Some sort of funeral that we can perform. I've never seen that before. So, fairly soon, once everyone is recovered from their injuries, we'll pay our respects to Mardian. Okay. So, it's the 2nd of Jugust, which is summer in the game. Not that it matters all that much in, uh, in a tropical rainforest, which is the type of biome that we're currently in. So, most of the people are sleeping because it's around 11 in the morning. Uh, we tend to be active at night, although some people are awake just, well, because of sickness and injury, they've been sleeping. Actually, quite a few people are awake. What's that about? We've just gotten over the sleeping sickness, which is good. Okay. So, quick introductions. Here we have Seawolf, who's a tribal forager at the age of 20. He's in a relationship with Marai the nudist, and he handles most of the cleaning. Here we have Psy Angel in an affair with Ashes One Away, the tribal shaman. She's married, he isn't. He is the bearded builder, who stoically handles most of the construction work. Here we have Mirai, so the second half of Seawolf over here. She bounces around the cave system completely stark, bollock naked, doing the cleaning. Here we have Philip the Cat, chief of the tribe. A big, burly, stoic woman, or sorry, um, steadfast woman, not stoic woman, who uh, has a pump-action shotgun and defends the tribe with it. Ashes Oneaway is the 48-year-old tribal shaman who acts as the spiritual leader, although she's not very good at it. She's currently taking food to our prisoner, Mole. She handles the prisoners currently. Nickel Dickel is the 29-year-old former Marine who is the muscle. He defends and escorts those that cannot defend themselves. Dr. Frosty is the now in mourning... I was going to say widow, but she wasn't married, so I guess, yeah. So the surviving half of, uh, of the relationship. She only has one leg. She lost it fairly recently in a raid. Uh, she handles most of the um, most of the kitchen work. She is very... Oh, no, wait. I thought it was about to say major break risk. Yeah, she'll have a major penalty for a good entire season, so we've got to watch out for her. For this reason, Dr. Frosty, would you mind dropping a weapon, please? Just in case. Dragoner is the 36-year-old former contract miner from a technocratic tribe who has since converted to us. She handles most of the mining and is in fact Chief Spelunker, a position available in the tribe that lets her dig really quickly. And finally, Lazy Space Gecko, a cranky bandit factory worker who is extremely antagonistic and hostile. She hasn't fully converted. She has not earned the rights to wear the colours of the Dark Sufferers, our cave people. And uh, she's proving to be cranky. She wants to keep slaves and go raving and rave, raiding and reaving. I keep saying ra uh, raving for some reason. She wants to go fight. We won't let her. So, welcome to the Pale Ones. Now, first order of business will be to repair anything that was destroyed. Turrets would be the notable, yeah, the notable example. Okay. 
We also need to bring in the synthetics. They've, they've got valuable materials that we can reclaim. It's also extremely warm. We're in the middle of a heat wave, so it's 49 degrees outside, even in the rain. Uh, Mirai is suffering from heat stroke because, because of her nudism, uh, she's not able to effectively resist the temperature. So please wear this duster. That will keep the sun off of your skin. Heat stroke, Mirai. You'll be okay. Okay. So, most people are currently sleeping. Injury-wise, we're okay. So, Philip the Cat has the last injury, it seems. What about the sleeping sickness? Is everyone who had it over it now? Dr. Frosty still suffers from it. She'll be fine. 84% immune, 54% infected. Okay, developed immunity. We'll be fine. So it's just Dr. Frosty and the prisoner called Mole. 70% versus 56%. Okay. Thank you, Hectonian, and Plagiat Psycho, and Snags, and Lankerson, and Summer Girl, and Michael, and Umlaut. Thank you, all of you, for your kindness. Sorry for missing you before. Thank you. Thank you for your extreme generosity. Extreme break risk, Dr. Frosty. I imagine so. Mad tortoise. A local tortoise has gone mad. Also, since she is in mourning, let us remove Dr. Frosty from the work schedule. Please, instead of working, do anything you like. Prioritizing recreation. Whoops. So, Dr. Frosty, please just focus on yourself. Process the death of your boyfriend in your own time. Sea Wolf the ha will handle the cooking. Don't you worry. Uh, yellow Pepper. I haven't tried it, I'm afraid. A, uh, a guy called Alastair, so a friend, told me uh, that royalty wasn't worth it at the time. So I never got around to installing it. Yes, he said it wasn't a very good fit. Or rather, it was rather half-baked as, uh, as content. Okay. We do have quite a few rhinos. We should definitely consider selling some of them. Ah, good. The heat wave is over. The tortoise is probably going to trigger a trap and get itself killed, but we should just keep an eye on it just in case it tries to bite somebody and that bite gets infected. Okay. Dragon is off to tend to one of the huskies. Takio was bruised in the fight. As was uh, Seba Boy the Rhino. They're both doing okay. Right. For those joining the stream and passing through, please know that on the bullshittery front for YouTube, it's week 8 of 10. Once again, sorry it takes so long. Um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big video. Okay. Uh, Ash is one away. The shaman is having a conversation with the bandit Mole, trying to convince them to join us. So also, now that we've lost Mardian, unfortunately we have to... We have to have someone take his place in the research lab, so... Ash is one away. It might have to be you. Skill of nine. Skill of three is Mirai. Okay. So until a suitable candidate comes along to replace... It's gonna have to be you. Okay. Right, so once Philip is over her injuries, she's almost over it. We should hold this funeral then, see what happens. So, people are waking up. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so, what does this mean? Dark Requiem can start after event, a gathering that occurs around a believer's grave after they die and are buried. If the body is destroyed, an empty grave can be used. Slaves don't get funerals. Depending on ritual quality, participants will get between minus three and plus eight mood for six days. A grave containing a dark sufferer's corpse is the focus object. Here we go. So... 
So Ash's one away is going to, yeah, do a quick speech. Maybe, hang on, just in case food is considered. Yeah, so make sure people have eaten before we do this. Just in case, it, like, the, uh, the, if the mood boost is, uh, takes food into account. Everyone just go get a meal. Thank you, Legend and Flapper Plapper. Thank you, both of you. Hi there, White Run. Um, alas, I, it's probably best if you focus on your lesson. You can watch stream. You can watch streams after the lesson, Flapper. Go focus on your education. Also, hi there. Okay. Good. Chief Philip is fully healed. Everyone is fully healed. Well, apart from a uh, Psy Angel who lost a toe, I believe. Right big toe was sliced off by one of the Scythers. Nasty. Okay. Oh yeah, what happened to that mad tortoise? It's, yeah, it got killed by a trap. Cool, we're good. Right, so... Let's do this then. So let's pay our respects. Begin the ritual. Right. Participants. Uh, okay. Who's the missing two? Eight out of ten? Uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, spectators? Hmm? Participants? Who, who are the missing two? Oh, 10 maximum. Gotcha. Sorry. With you. Here we go. Not seen this before. So, we, we cave people believe in the voice beyond the walls. So, Mardian has simply taken his place. And has joined the voices, the chorus of the voices. So they're paying their respects. So Ashes One Away is describing death. Dr. Frosty has the prominent place there in front of the, the tomb. Ashes the Shaman discusses what happens after death. Ashes offers thoughts on death. It's quite sweet, to be honest, isn't it? She's talking about family. Death as a path towards dignity. He died well. Good Dark Requiem. The Dark Requiem was good. The speaker's final words provided a path for everyone to move on. Everyone participating in the ritual gained a plus five mood for six days. The quality was 68%, close, determined by these factors. So the moral guide was present, and uh, four out of ten participant count? Hmm, weird. Was anyone missing? No, the whole tribe was there. Maybe it counts the dogs? Mm. Anyway, rest in peace, Mardian. A bandit who joined us, converted, and was working on our research, and was looking to build a future together with his girlfriend, and soon to be wife. A future that will never happen. Here's the faded dreams. So speaking of dreams, we're going to make as a role-playing gimmick in the tribe, we're going to be telling tales of a great journey that the tribe must undertake. For this cave is our home, but somewhere out there, well, how would we sell it? How would cave people sell it? Effectively to the far north is an escape ship. Let's say they have no concept of a ship. What would be calling them to the north? 
the voice of, of their gods. A flying cave. The voice of the darkness. Well, it would, it would be the voice of Al Alalim, so the name of their god, right? Yeah, prophecy. That's a good one, DeLorean. A prophecy. So we're following an ancient prophecy. That the mole people would inherit the something. And we're being called. Called far north. So let me show you. So. We're down here. It would be a, a perilous journey. Which would no doubt involve different cave networks being built. So what I'll probably do is we'll get to a point And then we'll probably migrate from here all the way up the road system to say the desert where we would found another colony right then we would stay there for a time regroup reorganize and then go here to tundra and say dig into the mountain here and then finish our final leg where we cross into the icy polar north an ice sheet where there is a mysterious voice the voice of Al 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 Alim. It's an escape vessel. It's a ship. Of course, we have no concept of space travel, so we don't know that. Indeed, B Joseph. But I've never, I've never had a migration playthrough before, so we should consider it. Normally, I just hunker down and build a ship and launch. So let's do something different this time, eh? Okay. <coughs> I think so, Agarob. Yeah, we'll do something different. Okay, so it's five in the morning, so most people will, will be winding winding down and going to bed soon. Food reserves though, aren't looking great, to be honest. Don't we have lots of Nutrifungus to harvest? We do. Chief Philip is now boxing up some raw fungus, and one of the dogs is taking it into the area before the kitchen. Okay. So... The forager, Seawolf, is handling the cooking whilst uh, Dr. Frosty is mourning. Psy Angel, the builder, is replacing some of the destroyed spike traps. Carry on. Mirai is playing the game of Ur. Once you're finished, you can remove your duster. There's no longer a heat wave. You can go nude again. Chief Philip is harvesting mushrooms. Ashes one away is off to clean more of the animal filth. Can I please deprioritize your cleaning routine? I need you to try and go through the notes that Mardian left behind. Try to make sense of them. He was researching some sort of strange power from the ground. He kept saying the word geothermal. Whatever that means. Try and figure out what it means. Nickel Dickle the Marine is hauling one of the dead synthetics into the base. We should be able to disassemble it and use its parts for stuff. Dr. Frosty is sleeping. No doubt exhausted from all the crying. Dragonet is moving some supplies into the drugs storeroom. We have quite a bit of ambrosia. That's good. Delicious. Juicy fruit. Oh, it will expire soon. In 2.1 days. We best get it in the freezer. So, foods. Manufactured. Drugs. Technically not manufactured, but it's fine. Dragonet, would you mind hauling that? We dismembered a god machine? Well, no, god machine in the sense that it can only be a product of the gods, or at least the evil gods. We don't revere it. In fact, the god machines destroyed our former tribe. So more like devil machines, I suppose, in the same way that the devil is an angel. Okay. Besides, I mean, not all God. Yeah, I mean, depends if you're just if you've got a, like a monotheist type religion, as in, I'm sure they can believe in multiple gods, and not all of them have the best interest of the mole people, um, you know, in mind. Metallic demons. Yeah, that's kind of good. Metallic demons, says Mazzy. So no, think. So go with that for a second. So. Obviously, cave people would have an extremely well... It, they would have a sophisticated religious system, right? 
to explain all their weird rituals. So how would they conceptualize a moving... So a piece of metal that moves. They would have no word for machine. A piece of metal that can move on its own. A golem, I suppose, yeah. Like a living... Living metals. Living metal, that sort of thing. Thank you, Shazkar. Yeah, like a live metal. Go with that for a second, as in... How would cave people who know nothing but darkness and tunnels... Angry metal. Yeah, stuff like... Yeah, like exactly that. Ang and Nerva says angry stone. Well, we know that they're... We know what metal is, so we know they're not stone. We know they're metal. Because we pull them apart for metal. Or souls. Mm, doesn't really roll off the tongue, Clefty. But I like your thinking. Demon ore. Yeah. Like spirit metal. Yes, yeah, spirit metal or something, you know? Hate metal. Hate bound metal, says Boyka. Ooh. Terror metal? I like ang like angry metal. Oh. Creatures of angry metal. Uh, sorry, what's going on? Uh, so the factory worker is off to go hide in her room. She's she's upset that we're not conquering other people. Hmm. Swite says there's a steady influx of space crashed people, so I think they have a vague understanding of the concept of war robot. Sure, but remember that um, uh, that any shaman, so the, the the role of a shaman, or is to maintain the status quo. New ideas are um, are a problem for a religion. A religion does not exist to accurately describe and uh, adapt itself to meet the environment. It exists purely to dominate the environment with a status quo that must not be changed. So even though yes, they're being I, I mean, here, Dragoner is from another tribe, a technocratic tribe. She has probably learned to shut the fuck up. For she will simply be ostracized for speaking the truth. For truth is the enemy of a religion. That's true, and we are using a generator. Let's pretend that Dragoner built that. No one knows what it does. Okay. Right, so, two in the afternoon, Nickel Dickle is off to go get a bite to eat. No, wait, he's not. He's off to go and refuel one of the coolers. Eh. Don't worry about it. Uh, which cooler are you refueling? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Steel men. Hmm. Not sure, Moon. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's part of it. Maybe pulling them apart. M hell, maybe the presence of the, the hate-filled metal is an offence. That they should be pulled apart. These golems of hatred and steel. Rage forged. Hmm. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, though. Pin says, I maintain my idea. A form of magic which can animate metal when assembled in a specific way. Kind of like alchemy or runes. That magic is in fact electricity, and Dragoner has the knowledge of that craft. Yeah, that would make sense. They would see electricity as magic, wouldn't they? They, they, they would just be... Ah, these lights are magic. 
Go fix the magic generator. <laughs> Get more wood for the magic generator. Uh, yes, Ratnik. I, I, I admit I'm going to have a much harder time explaining uh, explaining away each of the elements of their religion in the face of, I don't know, cryo sleep or advanced fabrication or Starflight basics or the Johnson Tanaka drive. <laughs> they can be like, oh, this coil of copper, oh, magic, oh. All right. So, for the people just joining, welcome indeed. Our cave continues to exist. I was going to say thrive, but we have just lost our principal researcher. We're not going to be staying here forever. So, we're going to be moving from this place further north on a migration. Not sure when. Also, we should consider getting some crops sown purely to sell. So, let's put down a growing zone here. Allow sowing of hmm. hay grass, maybe. Psychoid? Yeah, why not? Get some stuff that we can sell. So plant some psychoid leaves and uh, even if it's just the raw resource, sell them to another tribe nearby. Okay. So, the forager sea wolf is off to go cooking. Uh-oh. Sight Angel, what happened? Huh? Oh shit! You accidentally sprung one of the traps. God damn! Okay, I've not seen that before. I've seen them accidentally spring a mine, but not a trap. Bugger! Holy shit! So Sight Angel, whilst crossing one of the traps, it sprung up. Holy moly. It sprung up from the swamp stabbing him four times. Those are some very serious injuries. He shrieks in pain and falls to the ground, dropping the submachine gun in the mud. Where's Mariah? Mariah's closest. She heard the scream. Quickly drag him in. Quick, you're a nudist, so you're fast. God damn. Quickly. He's, he's writhing in agony. Blood everywhere. He's bleeding very heavily. Mariah's going to pull him into the infirmary quickly, and Dragon is going to tend to him. Okay. Philip, since the kitchens are going to need that, could you quickly haul that in, please? Damn, there, go there goes my builder for a time, then. Gecko's the, the other builder, and she's having a paddy. Right. Uh, thank you, no more rest for the wicked. Thank you, no more. And Muhammad Basna and Shaz... Wait, Shazka and Theus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are we okay? Is he going to be okay? Dragon is ready. We need some more heal root as well. We're running low after the sleeping sickness, so put down some heal root here. Wait, what am I doing? That's the storage zone. Ah. <laughs> Where's the heal root? I'm blind. Heal root. There it is. Thank you, Palo Vero. Thank you, Palo. Okay, Mariah places him down in that bed and then goes off. Dragoner gets to work. Picking up some of the meds. Three hours until he bleeds to death, so move quick. Okay, you need to move faster. Quickly grab the other meds. I'm authorizing the use of the actual meds. So she reaches for a box of mysterious chemicals. They've got writing on them that we cannot read. One of them says morphine. 
We don't know what it is, but the pain goes away when we inject it. Okay. He'll be okay. No permanent injuries. Well, beyond uh, one of his left fingers removed. She's a shaman, uh, Act 60. She's the spiritual shaman. She has the role that's called um, something of Al-Alim? Alamar of Al-Alim. She's a spiritual leader. Okay. Looking good. How are the defences? That is online when it shouldn't be. I need to uh, move this power cable closer so we can hook that up there. And move that turret there, please. And also get a turret here, please. See, Wolf, what's your building skill? Well, you're too busy with that, so don't worry. Nickel Dickle can do some building, can he not? Nah, eh, no, zero skill. Yeah, I need Gecko to stop having a tantrum. Thank you, your pal, and D Chain. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Okay. So just rest there, Psy Angel. You've got some serious injuries, but hopefully they'll go away soon. Right. Chief Philip, what are you doing? Harvesting more mushrooms. Carry on, please. Cool. The others are carrying the boxes of mushrooms into the storeroom. How am I going to deal with the next machine attack? Uh, di with difficulty. So we need more armor. We need more weapons. We need to improve the defenses. We need to train the rhinos to properly be a to properly attack on command. Thank you, Sir Dance a Lot the Third. Thank you. We should also maybe stagger the entrances in such a way that we can let the enemies enter the room fully before we jump them. So what we could do, because Mardian tried to hide here and then he got shot through that wa that way. So what we could do is we could do like, like that or something. Like that, maybe not in this room. And then we can wait until they're in the room and then be like, aha, and then jump them. Like, high round the corner. And then spring on them with swords. Yeah, like that sort of thing. Then again, if I'm going to do that, then I need to make sure there's, a, there's an escape route there. So we can put an escape route and have it lead around the edge. Basically, bunker systems. Uh, a, a way of firing from bunkers and then quickly withdrawing to the next layer of defences. Maybe setting some explosives behind. Boom, and then fall back to the next line of defences. We should also consider placing lots of wooden furniture, loads of wooden furniture. So once we have explosive IEDs, sorry, incendiary IEDs, we can seal the door behind us and let it heat up. The superheated air can be a weapon. Granted, it won't be very superheated if it's vented to the open, which it probably will, but just patches of fire everywhere would be a hassle. <clears throat> uh, yes, just a coincidence, Lawrence. Yeah, the ants seem to be doing okay. Sorry, one minute. <clears> hmm. <throat> <laughs> Sleepy dog. Yeah, she's okay. She had a nice play this morning in the park with some other dogs that she bumped into. So yeah, she's happy. There was this tiny puppy and it was teething, so its uh, teeth were needle sharp. And it was continually trying to bite my fingers. I was like, ow. <clears throat> okay, so Seawolf cooking. So it's four in the morning. We'll be going to bed soon as the sun comes up. 
need to get more wooden furniture in there. Yeah, hang on. And also some power cables. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, we can't actually... Damn. It's all the way on the edge of the map. We can't build there. I don't want to think about it, Kieran. Uh, Kieran Tor Torian. But, uh, yeah, it would be nice to get another one. Hungry hitched animals. Oh, no. So the donkeys don't have sufficient grass. Right. So. Uh, let's reconstruct the pen. Yeah, it should be simple. Just build a pen here. Uh, doesn't have to be massive. It used to be massive because we had ducks and they were, they were eating vast amounts of food. Okay. Uh, she's going indoors to get wood? I think so. Um, deconstruct this section. Major break risk. Who is it? It is Dr. Frosty, of course. She'd be very upset. Oh, not much wood. Uh, can you chop down... Uh, hang on, plant cutting. No, very little skill with it. Okay, carry on. Okay, so Dr. Frosty is doing what right now? She's just relaxing in that, yeah, keeping to herself. Uh, good funeral. That funeral went well. A good way to say goodbye. That's good. So can we? No. Drat. I should also consider getting additional fire doors here. We can't really have any big open spaces that are, that are going to... Well, that will make it much harder to uh, set fires. Make sure that we have power cables, flammable pow power cables all over the place. Oh, and also we need to get an armory built over here, don't we? So furniture. Let's build some... Delving units. Yeah, and then we'll have... Oh, okay. Yeah, multiple shelves of armor, weaponry. So people can keep their weaponry... Uh, basically take off their clothes and run around in t-shirts. And when the battle commences, they rush to the armory and uh, get themselves equipped. No, oh, look at her. She's a happy girl. Hang on a minute. Oh, that's not the right feed. For some reason I've got a du duplicate feed, I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Yep, more, more turrets as well. More everything, just keep expanding. Okay, Space Gecko has stopped hiding in her bedroom. Alright. So, Mirai, could you... Yeah, please focus on getting this uh, this pen built, because the donkeys are hungry. There's just not enough food for them to, uh, to eat nearby. Okay. Uh, Mag says that Lulu is a lot lazier than Ceci, uh, who has been poking me for an hour during my last meeting to go outside and play. Aww. Says he's cute. Not sure, half finished. It was just a random event. Okay, Mariah the nudist bounces through the corridor, grabbing some wood from the storeroom over there. She has a conversation with uh, the shaman, Ashes One Away, about carrots. Okay. 
Ashes is going to bed. The Cobra Silena is going into Nickel Dickel's bedroom for some reason. Alright. So, let's make sure that Philip is able to... Yeah, so I need to properly sow these uh, fields in the morning. Well, in the evening. It's the morning now. Let's go to bed. So Mar Mariah the Nudist is carrying some wood out to the fence posts over here. I expect we'll probably lose the donkeys, though, if we cannot effectively recall them before a battle. Okay, let's go to bed. So everyone should now be sleeping momentarily. There we go. Right, the whole tribe is asleep. How Psy Angel's injuries. So he's gone from extreme pain down to severe. Okay. Begin conversion ritual. Ooh, interesting. We might be able to uh, attempt to convert Space Gecko. Something that we definitely want to try and do. We should finish this uh, ideogram. It's like a central position for um, our ideologian. Hmm. Hi there, Jovdin. Uh, no, I don't think I have. I've not tried the uh, that um, yeah that DLC thing. Oh, Doctor Frosty is awake doing cooking. Are you sure? Okay. You don't have to. You can just do recreation. Maybe she just wants to feel busy. Uh, is Mole over his sleeping sickness? I don't think so. No, he's still quite sick. He's lost one kidney, so this bandit has a hard time getting over infections. So, 87% uh, immune. Oh no. Oh no, sorry, 87. No, he's fine. 70% infected. He should be okay. Right, so, Space Gecko, when you wake up, before you get your meal, could you get some steel from the storeroom? Oh. Cannot work. Oh, really? So only those of our ideologian can work on it. And Psy Angel is wounded in the infirmary. Gonna have to wait until he's feeling better then. Dragon has brings him some, uh, some cooked fungus. Spongy. Okay. Cool. Feel better soon. Dragon of the Miner is having a conversation with Chief Philip about octopuses. Ah, the rhino Zam Rabbit is pregnant. Well done, for the first time. We have a lot of rhinos, what the fuck? Okay. Sea Wolf is off to clean the dirt. While you're out there, Sea Wolf, would you mind uh, chopping down some trees for the wood? That would be most helpful because you're pretty damn good at it. And then Mariah can use it to make the fence posts without having to wander through the entire base. Thank you kindly. Okay. Thank you, Bakari and Jung Wan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. So, Gecko, what's he up to? Building wooden fences. Carry on. Dragon of the Miner is feeding the prisoner. Why? Why are you feeding the prisoner? Oh, okay. You've got nothing else to do? For real? So prioritize two on hauling. Your skills are quite well defined. You're incapable of most of the things apart from mining and medical stuff. Okay. Should keep you mining then, shouldn't we then? Right. There's some components over here. Go get those. There's some gold somewhere as well, isn't there? Compacted steel. More components. Oh, 
Wasn't, wasn't there some gold? Am I going crazy? We had some in, in, in one of the walls. Steel. There. Oh, I see. It, it's the freezer unit. Okay. Uh, no, Bakari. So there were no local elections here in my particular constituency. Uh, I think the closest one was further down the coast for me. Okay. Uh, did you finish? Yeah. Uh, come on. We need. We need this fence built. Let's go. Haul ass. Haul ass. Haul ass. Right. How you feeling, Sir Angel? Severe pain. Slowly getting better. Nickel Dickle, can you? Yeah, can you at least deliver the steel to the ideogram? You don't have to build it. I would like to try and convert Space Gecko so she'll be less of a ball ache. She gets really upset because we're not taking slaves. Uh, we're trying to we uh, weaponize them, Smack Jammy. There we go. Cool, and then we should have a pen. Then we can move the donkeys in there, rather than leave them hitched up there. Sweet. Okay. So we need to watch out. By removing this wall, we've removed the um, refrigeration. So we're going to have to replace it. And quickly. So, Gecko, would you mind? Thank you. Right, and we need to get this armory built here, don't we? Put like an auto door on it so we can quickly go in, grab the weapons. Okay. So, structure, auto door. Uh, go with the... Uh... Oh, we don't have any free marble? Okay, just go with steel. It's not ideal because it won't contain a fire. And then it's, yep, stretch the power conduit that way. Right, Chief Philip, you're harvesting, well, you're planting more mushrooms. Then we need you to go outside and plant those crops, please. All right. So far, so good, everyone. So if you're just joining the stream, you're looking at a colony, colony of mole people living under a mountain. Uh, okay, we need marble blocks and we don't have them. Okay, a uh, point of some urgency then because we have no refrigeration until that is that is done. So, once you've finished attempting to recruit Mole, the prisoner, Ash is one away. Could you just get a few marble blocks? So she's talking to the bandit Mole about vacations. Okay. We haven't fully converted him to our ideologian, but he at least does have a Mole person ideologian, so that's something. Right. So, Psy Angel over here. Do you think... I know you're going to hate it, but would you mind... So, you're in lots of pain. He staggers outside of the infirmary. Do you think you could build that, or is it going to take you too long? Passes Nickel Dickle the Marine and talks about social issues. It might take you too long, to be honest. Do what you can. Okay. 
So yes, a formerly a hunter, Psy Angel is handling most of the building because he has a burning passion for it. So, as you can see, progress on skill is very fast there. Ooh, dead synthetics that we can uh, pull apart. Good, 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 good. Uh, no, Shizuna, it's just we're not ready for that migration. Okay, we need refrigeration. So Ashes 108 is making some marble blocks. Uh, sorry to wake you, Gecko, it's just we do... We do need that refrigeration underway, so please get up, get up out of bed. The 24-year-old cranky factory worker staggers out of the lobby to find the bricks that... Uh, Ashes one away is making. Mirai, what are you doing? You're cleaning. No reachable pens? Why? What are they allocated to? Animals, donkeys. The donkeys are restricted where? Uh, please move them into area three. Oh. Really? Pen marker. Uh... Do I need the pen marker there, maybe? Is that a thing that I need? Alright. It's gonna take time. Okay, go get, go get back into bed, dude. Just go rest. I need you... I need you healed more than I, I need that. Okay. Dragon of the Doctor, would you mind bringing some food to Psy Angel, please? Thank you. Good. Mariah the Nudist is grabbing the donkeys by their leads and pulling them into the pen. This should give them way more food, way more roughage. Thank you, Jace193. Thank you, Jace. Hmm. Some frozen bad eggs. Honestly, I don't really care about those. Let's switch that off. Switch off the cooler. Save power. Um, the sun is coming up. The, burnings, the burning ball in the sky hurts, so please get back inside at your earliest opportunity. True, Paco, but we uh, we don't like them. We're mole people. We like to eat the fruits of the cave. Fungus. Damn it, you only bought one. Should be enough. Nickel Dickle, the marine, is off to pay his respects to Mardian. visiting the sarcophagus. So in other playthroughs on mountain bases, um, towards the end of the playthrough when the colonists were finally leaving and going back to civilization, I would typically seal off the sarcophagus room. I would just completely wall it in so no one can find it. So the colonists would pay their last respects to the fallen and then we'd seal it forever. On one occasion, a playthrough that I eventually, I, I kind of, like, in my mind, it never, it never went anywhere, and I don't know if it ever will. There was one playthrough which was incredibly interesting, because two people were left behind. And so, um, it was interesting watching them try to survive on a playthrough that had ended. For the colony was destroyed, the whole thing was gutted by raiders, so there was nothing left. Until they realised that they could, uh, they could assemble parts, or rather deconstruct parts, for uh, cryo-sleep caskets. To join those already in their marble sarcophaguses. Yeah, just lots of cool story shit in RimWorld. 
Hmm. Refrigerated but not frozen. We need to get through this meat. We're not eating it. I don't know, Spectre. I'm afraid my interest in 40k has kind of waned uh, over the last few years. Wasn't what I thought it was. Oh, I suspended the kibble job. Didn't mean to do that. Make some kibble. Okay, so the colonists are going to bed. Carry on. It wasn't what I thought it was, Mag. Um, yeah, it, it was. It was on me. It wasn't on 40k. It was on me. Uh, the properties that I thought it had actually weren't, and it was more just a. Uh, um, nah, it's it's hard to explain. I thought it was something that it wasn't in the end. Okay. It's it it's in reality it's uh it's a fictional setting that observes it, that exists as an advert in order to sell pieces of plastic. It, the the quant the qualities that I thought it had as a storytelling property were just created by the viewers. Those that own it don't share that perspective. They'll twist and turn it in whichever direction sells the most pieces of plastic. Which is very frustrating because, if I, you know, yeah. Right. So Gecko is the only one awake because she's not part of our ideology, which I'm, I'm trying to change by converting her. Good, she has some ability with building. Carry on, please. Get the whole thing built as quickly as you can. Thank you, Camu. Thank you very much, Camu. Right. Good, so we got frozen. Yeah, we've frozen it once again. Yeah, Mole is living here rent-free. Would you join us, you bastard? He's nearly over his psychite addiction, which is good. Okay. What's his resistance to, to joining? 8.6. So hopefully, yeah. Hopefully we should be able to uh, get him to join us. Thank you, Molinan. Thank you very much, Molinan. Okay, cool, looking good. So, let's make sure that the marble walls are extended all the way over here. So I'm triple walling this, as I should be triple walling most areas of the base to contain fires. And then we need to make sure that everything inside is made out of wood, so that if it catches fire, it turns into a blast furnace. I need to be able to reliably and predictably set fires and let them burn hot and fast. It's a defense measure. If I'm losing a room, I burn the room. I'd rather lose an entire room, hell, an entire colonist in the room than lose the colony. Thank you, Aftura Gaming. Thank you, Aftura. Thank you. Okay, so Seawolf is doing some cooking. Um, Can I just... We, we do have quite a few meals. When you get back in there, would you mind... Hang on. Could you prepare some... Make some kibble. Because we've got lots of meat that we're just not using, and it's taking up quite a bit of the stockpiles here. Uh, ooh, no. Um, 
don't use fungus. Use so raw food, vegetarian. Don't use the fungus. Just use the stuff that we don't eat, like the rice. There we go. So a bit of monkey meat from one of the monkeys that caught itself on a trap outside with some rice. The dogs will love that. Okay, and then just drop it on the floor. Haul it out later to start processing this sh this shit. Cool. So some rice and some more monkey meat. Hi there, Zidane. Wait. Uh, Zidane? I think? Hi there, indeed. So, Seawolf the Forager is cooking. Uh, Psy Angel is trying to get over his injuries, having been wounded by a trap. The, hi the injuries are healing, but he's still in severe pain, just due to how numerous they are. Ashes One Away, the Shaman, is going through Mardian's old notes. The notes contain information on something called geothermal energy. She's trying to determine exactly what that means. She's determined so far by moving papers around the place. She can't read, by the way. She's doing her best. It has something to do with heat coming out of the ground. And somehow it can make magic light stuff. She's trying to figure out exactly what all of it means. It's very strange. Nickel Dickle the Marine is eating breakfast. Dr. Frosty is... Trying to keep busy, but she's super upset about the death of her fiance. Dragon of the contract mine, the contract miner, is also eating breakfast. Hmm. Okay. Space Gecko, the factory worker, is bringing in some wood from outside in order to make the shelving systems that we're going to use to store weapons and armor, so that we can take them off when we're working. Everyone has a slight movement penalty if they're wearing armor. So by working without armor, we'll be like Mirai, quick on our feet. Seawolf is... Oh, piss, I forgot. My bad. He had a, a ta inspired taming, one of the best events that you can get, in fact. He could have instantly tamed anything I wished. I forgot that he had it. Oops. I could have gotten like a free elephant from that, or a thrumbo if one turned up. Oopsie doopsie. Oh well, it happens. I'm sure there'll be another one. Seawolf, what are you doing? Off to go cleaning. Um, could you continue making kibble? I know you've hit the limit of kibble. Well, you haven't hit the limit of kibble. Get your ass back in there, dingus. Oh, need materials? Oh, I see. You've gone through all of the rice. Hmm. Eh. Okay. That's fine. Um. Uh, can someone move that egg? Oh, it's fine. Just leave it. It's fine. Carry on. You do you. I know, Sir Hook. Don't be silly. I don't read the chat. Right. Can someone bring food? There we go. Dragon of the Doctor is stepping into the infirmary to give food to Psy Angel the Miner, who sits up in bed. Zoran is pregnant. Another rhino is pregnant. <laughs> we need to start selling our rhinos. Ah. The wind turbines are still damaged. Uh, Gecko, would you mind fixing them before another raid destroys them? And also, would you mind uh, chopping down the trees? I would just assign a grow zone for it, but fuck it. Hang on. Uh, no, not harvest. Cut plants, please. Chop the trees so that they don't interfere with the power generation. Thank you kindly. Right. Also, please bear with me. I require a wee wee. Back in a moment.
Hello. So, for the people just joining the stream, I hope you're having a nice day today. Welcome to a tribe of mole people. So, we're in the side of a mountain that we've, uh, well, we've entered a uh, insect nest like one of these. It was empty, there was nothing here when we got here, unlike the other two. And we've since expanded it, trying to move deeper and deeper into the side of the mountain in order to create our home. So, things are going fine insofar as food. We have lost somebody recently. Mardian, unfortunately, was killed. So Ashes one away is having to take over research duties from him. Next priority will be to see if I can convert Lazy Space Gecko, the rather cranky bandit who joined us but refuses to convert. She's finished fixing the wind turbines. What's that sound? Ah, Chief Philip is sowing heel root. There we go. Cleaning away, yeah, clearing away the uh, the grasses and the competing vegetation. It's around 11 in the evening on the 5th of Jugust, which is summer. Not that the seasons overtly matter in this biome, but they will later when we start to migrate. We could do that, McNuthead, yes. Although, I'm probably not going to leave these here for too long. The wind turbines are currently in the path of the kill zone for the turrets. What I probably will do instead is I'll wall off this section here with big, thick walls, and then I'm going to build a geothermal thing and thread a wire up this way. The wire can still be destroyed, of course, but at least the turrets can fire over it with impunity. Okay. Oh yes, of course, I forgot about the, the peg thing. So, nutrition consumption 1.56 with nutrition growth 3.57. Cool. The donkeys should have sufficient roughage to keep them fed. Well done, Dragoner. Right. We need to get these doors in. I'm nervous about an, an infestation over here. We don't have sufficient, um, well, fireproofing in order to keep this place safe. Right. Ashes is going off to do some more research. Please carry on. Okay, uh, Psy Angel is only in a medium amount of pain, so could I wake you up, please? He's a bit stiff and owie from the stab wounds from the trap, but at least none of them are infected and they're healing quite cleanly. So he now steps into the smoothed uh, lobby area and is currently working to build an ideogram to so the image of sufferism. So our religion, our ideologion, sorry. Ah, oh, interesting. A caravan from the Pact of the Crag, a neutral tribal, uh, tribe people, people, thing, group. They're coming. They're a war merchant. Ooh, they have wargs. Interesting. Hello. We'll do some trading with them. Maybe they'd like to buy some rhinos. As nice as it is to have all these rhinos, if we don't have them trained, then they're just added wealth onto the colony that could be, um, yeah, put into silver. All right. So yeah, for the people just passing through the stream, please know that on the bullshittery front, I'm on week 8 of 10 on Divinity Bullshittery Part 3. Sorry for the delay. Hope to have it ready for you as soon as I can. The next bullshittery will be the choice of the patrons and the Twitch subscribers. I will send out polls. If you're a Twitch subscriber, please note that Twitch have taken away the email system that I used to use. Previously, I would just send an email, there's a button that says, or well, there was a button, that says send email to all of your subscribers, including all of the Prime subscribers. They took that away. I don't know why. Someone said that it was because people, like, some streamers were sending links to, like, adult shit, like OnlyFans, but I don't know if that's true. All I know is that they took it away so damn quickly that I couldn't send an email to warn people that they were taking it away. Ugh. So instead, there's a Discord group below. If you link your Twitch account to the Discord group, it should automatically assign you the correct permissions to view it. 
it exists purely as a replacement for said system so it's not like a like a fan thing it's just a if you're a twitch subscriber then i can stay in touch and send you polls and get your opinions and link the video early all that jazz i could sir tony but it's for the twitch subscribers and i think they've taken away that old subscriber only room as well haven't they you know, for all the talk that Twitch makes about building a community, they certainly make it hard to stay in contact with that community. Thank you, Heiliger Lowy. Thank you. All right. The friend list is going away. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Twitch are continually coming up with new ideas, and to be fair, a lot of them are horrible. The friends list was one of them. Why? <laughs> Thank you, Fat Man. Thank you very much, Fat Man. Okay. How am I finding Discord now? Gotten used to it? Indeed I have. Um, yeah, so I think I've gotten the hang of it, Clumbum. I must admit, I'm feeling really old. I, I don't think it's for me. I, I find its feature sets are a bit, like, I don't know. It's, um, its UI is awful, for one. Like, there's so much, so much that, that could be easily just, just made easier to use. Again, I feel really old for saying this. So many minor things that I would change and like, I know that's stupid, get rid of that. Bin that entirely. Yeah. Right, anyway, sorry, more importantly. So, begin conversion ritual. Here we go. So, Lazy Space Gecko is currently sleeping. Let's have a look. So, try to persuade someone into joining your ideal religion. In case of, su in case of success, their certainty will be reduced. In cases of success, their certainty will be reduced, uh, or they will convert immediately. If it backfires, their certainty in their own beliefs will increase. Okay. So, expected duration, two hours. Outcome chance, 60% quality. Right. Seven out of ten participants. Room impressiveness. We could make it better, couldn't we? Expectations? Wait until Gecko's awake. And let's see if we can move some... Do we have, like, some artwork that we can move? Marble sculptures. We've got some in the rec room. Mm. Do we have any, like, just lying around? Got some, like, urns that we can move. Okay. There's another urn. Move over there. They're quite pretty. Can you move that, please? Someone someone, go grab that strange, smooth rock that we found outside. There we go. There's another one there. Dr. Frosty, would you mind? Hmm. Oh, yes. The walls are still rough. God damn it. I prioritized that a long time ago. I, I'm sure, Hemo. I'm sure. God damn it, it's going to take a while. Oh yes, the traders. Let's not forget them. Nickel Dickle, please go talk to them. See if they have anything to sell. And see if they would like to purchase some rhinos. Bloody hell, how many rhinos? What the fuck? Okay, so... Uh, Commander Honk. So which ones are trained? Rhinos. So Tame. Okay, so Zam is trained to guard. So Commander Honk. So only Commander Honk and Zam so far. The rest are just... Okay. 
So... Really? So Azenko the Rin is not trained. Go see what... Yeah, just go have a look. Thank you, A97 Sund. Thank you, A97. Okay, so... Let's have a look then. They've got 834 units of silver. Now, keep that. And they're tribal, so they're, yeah, they don't have a huge amount of stuff. Sell these wooden war masks. Um, dusters, keep those. Burkers, incendiary launcher, bolt action rifle, keep the submachine gun. Keep the Gladius. Hmm. Sell some of our beer. Sell all of our beer? Yeah, sell some of it. Drugs are su it's super important that you keep drugs on hand. They're too useful. Oh, this seed. I'm probably never going to plant that. So, yeah, sell these two weird seeds for $42 um, dollars a piece. Keep the wake-up drugs, keep the ambrosia, keep the flake, the psychite tea. Well, we can grow fresh herbal meds, so we should be okay. You should, Bunny. Definitely. Always keep drugs, uh, always keep drugs ready in Rimworld. They can, be, they can be the difference between someone going berserk with a shotgun in the middle of your kitchen uh, after they've lost their wife and their friends. Or someone being calm for a little bit. That doesn't that doesn't mean your colony has to go crazy and start binging drugs, but just having some stimulants as a backup. Okay, so they do have some wargs for sale. Hmm. Wargs are pretty ferocious. Okay. The rhinos are worth quite a bit. Sell this newborn rhino, Rhino 2. Oh, damn. They're not worth as much newborn. Uh, okay, they, they don't really have the silver to cover the transaction anyway, so... It's a question of whether or not we're going to buy some wargs. Could buy a breeding pair. Yeah. So in the last playthrough, we had uh, we had a hound mistress. What was her name again? It was one. It was the mother. Of, was it the mother of Nervous? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, she was like a she had like a a pack of like six attack wargs, and she would just release them. Incredibly dangerous. That was it. It was like Batman. Yeah. That was it. Chucky's mother. Yeah, Batman. She would just point and, and say, go, and these wargs would just rush down the corridor, all muscle and teeth. Okay. You know what? If I can't train the rhinos, I'm not going to be able to train the wargs, well, uh, am I? Maybe I should just focus on the rhinos. Sell that one baby rhino. Maybe sell a Zenko the Rin. Sorry, Zenko. And then keep one, two, three, four, five, six rhinos. That's a lot of rhinos. Then again, they don't have the silver to cover it. What about medicine? Yes, they do. Thank you, Seblor. Thank you very much, Seblor. Okay. Yeah, so sell the two so sell Rhinoceros 2 and Azenko the Rin. Eh. No, fuck it. Sell the unnamed Rhino and keep Azenko the Rin. There we go. So we sold a bunch of beer for some silver. Don't just leave it there. They'll nick it. Right. Keep the rest of the rhinos, but we need to keep them we need to train them for Christ's sake. Who's doing the training? It's uh, Mirai, isn't it? What's she doing? 
Animal handling Mirai. She's sleeping. Okay. Right, so... Let's see if we can do the conversion ritual, eh? Oh, people are going to go to bed. Oh, damn, they're going to bed. I was too late. We'll do it in the morning. So Gecko is working on the armory. Oh, insufficient marble blocks. Okay. So, clear the storage. Yeah, so clear this. So what am I putting here? For the first row, let's put... Uh, so let's put... Let's put armor. So armor... We'll put... Uh, oh shit, the red flash storm. Put flak jackets there. Flak vests. Yeah, so a first row will be flak vests, then flak jackets, then flak trousers. Yeah. Where's the flash storm? Ah, oh, thrombos turn up now. God damn it. <laughs> Shit. Rare thrombos have arrived. Crap. Unlucky, yeah. We could have had a train we could have had a train thrombo. For those just joining the stream, we had an event that meant that sea wolf could instantly tame anything. Oh, and we got a monkey that self-tamed. Oh, hooray! God damn it. Oh, Jesus Christ. There's a monkey that's gotten ripped apart by something, and a rat that got ripped apart by something. I wonder what. Cobra, maybe? Yeah, bite. Cobra bite. Surely the cobra would just swallow the whole damn thing. Okay. It's the deadly chewing viper. Okay. So clear all. We'll put flak jackets here. And then clear all. We'll put flak trousers here. And then here in the last one we'll put... Uh, Plate armor. Okay. Thank you, Unreal Nimrod. Thank you, Unreal. Thank you very much, Unreal. Do neutral AI visitors automatically attribute any attacks as to being my fault? Yes, they do, Steel Crab. It's most frustrating. A bunch of them wandered into an insect nest and then they got killed, and then it was like, You have attacked them. I was like, Beg your pardon. Thank you, Trackler. Thank you very much, Trackler. Alrighty then. Let's also just move down a lamp into the corner. So, for those just joining... So we've got a colony of mole people on the third year. This won't be our permanent home. We're going to migrate following a prophecy. A prophecy that to the north will find our salvation. A mysterious voice on the wind is talking to us. So for now, we're just trying to do the best we can and stay alive. Would you like to buy a monkey? <laughs> Where's the monkey? Oh, they don't want it. Fine. Oh, I see. Slave icon. Uh. Right. So let people wait, w wake up and then we're going to do the conversion ritual. So. Move the urn over there. Let people wake up and get some breakfast. Oops. Yep, 
breakfast, 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 breakfast. Where are you going? Oh, we put the urn in storage for some reason. Okay. Will we see any public executions? I don't know. Hang on. Uh, factions, ideologians. What do we think about executions? So, the Dark Sufferist ideologian is here. Um... Execution. Horrible if innocent. Executing an innocent person is a horrible thing. If the prisoner is guilty, it's acceptable. Okay. So if they've attacked us and they've still got the guilty trait, then we can. And I believe we can even accuse somebody. Like someone can point at another and accuse them of, of something. And if it succeeds, then they get the tag guilty. So if somebody really cocks up, if someone does something unacceptable... Oh, that could be fun. Like, imagine if um, if a social fight happens and someone kills another. We can have, like, an eye for an eye situation. Right. So, has everyone eaten? Begin the conversion ritual. Here we go. So... Space Gecko is going to get called to that room over there for some reason. <laughs> Lying down on an altar for some reason. Ashes One Away is discussing the wrongness of apostasy and talking about the rightness of belonging. So for those not familiar, Space Gecko is a bandit and not part of our ideologian. Ashes the Shaman is discussing the future of mankind and how its future is in darkness, under the mountain, where we evolved, where we were created, forged from mud by the hands of Alalim. The outside is sinful, you see. It is full of light and badness. Only in darkness do we find the truth. Hidden from the lies, the illusions of the surface world and its fancy trinkets. Ashes One Away discusses the purpose of life and of belonging. She talks about the purpose of life, serving Alalim. Praise Alalim, the voice behind the walls. Oh no. Terrible conversion ritual. The conversion ritual was terrible. From the first word, it was fruitless back and forth argument. A fruitless back and forth argument. It dragged on for a cringe inducing long time. <laughs> conversion ritual total quality was 60%. Oh no. Oh no. So, Ashes One Away Social Impact. Uh, so, what is that? Have we strengthened Ash uh, Gecko's? Hang on. Oh, piss! Her beliefs have been... I don't know if they were 100% before, but they're certainly 100% now. Ah! God damn it. That's the trouble. She's the shaman through se seniority, but her social abilities are lacking. Thank you, Lazy Space Gecko, has just subscribed there. Thank you. Uncomfortable staring. <laughs> oh dear. Yep, Space Gecko is currently cringing their way through the cave, holding some logs. Voice behind the walls? Truth is on the inside of the mountain? What hogwash, she says. I worked in a factory. I know how things work. These people can't even use electrical appliances properly. And they supposed to they they claim to know anything about the state of the universe? Poppycock, she says. Poppycock. Ah, the trade caravan is leaving. Have a lovely day. Safe travels. 
Thank you, Rail Hero. Thank you very much, Rail. A seniority, Mendoza. We don't really have many people with a high social ability right about now. And she's the elder, so the, the tribal elder, the only one that survived the uh the initial survival situation from the uh what's it called it? The the, the the evil machines, the evil metal that was animated and attacked us. Robots. So her social abilities are lacking, but she's the old well, she's the elder. Thinking about that though. Hmm. So Nickel Dickel could take over, but Ooh. Ooh, interesting. Hold on. Could this be a sign from Alalim? What is this? Suddenly there's a light in the sky. A falling star containing Car Carole? Bennett. Okay. High shooting, high melee, cooking, mining ability. Skill of four on the social, but a passion for it. Interesting. It's a sign. It's a sign from Alalim. Oh, good God. That sign is dying in three hours. Fuck a duck. Um, okay. Quickly, run there, Nickel Dickel, as fast as you can. Mirai. Uh, that's really bad, actually. That's super bad. Um, Dragoner. There's no way I'm going to get... Okay, go, 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 go. Run. Try and patch her up as best you can. Dragoner, just get down there now. Are there any just... any? Is there any medicine anywhere? What are you doing, sausage? Hmm? Are you trying to contact contact Alalim? What are you doing? like Ugh. right sorry I got distracted okay so that um, new arrival is going to bleed to death within three hours so by the time we get them into the infirmary they will already be dead nickel dickle the marine is racing to the crash site of the fallen star Okay. Quickly, quickly, quickly. So, stumbling into the clearing, we find the wreckage of some sort of pod from the sky. Nickel Dickel, do you have any medical ability at all? Some, actually. A basic understanding. Can you at least try to stop the bleeding? What would be the most efficient course of action? Dragoner is hot. It, yeah, okay. I grab So quickly grab her. Try to pull her in. Quickly. Right, you can go. Right. So, Nickel Dickel... So, Dragoner says, stop, 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 stop. And he stops... They place down... Well, they just mark a spot. The, the, the storm is brewing above our heads, so this is, this is surely a sign from Alalim. Okay, quickly put her down. No? Rescue for colonists. Uh, fuck it, just drop her. Just drop her. Try to tend without medicine. Just quickly try and stop the bleeding. Uh, don't worry about that, Nickel Dickel. You just st stand on guard. There's a panther over there. Okay. So Dragoner is removing items of clothing from the wounded person and wrapping them around her neck. She's 48. She's a 48-year-old woman. Okay, the bleeding has stopped. Well done. Okay, so she's stabilized at the very least. So Dragoner, pull her into the infirmary. Rescue her and bring her in. 
a dead rat, really? I mean, do we give a shit? Bring in that machine instead. Whoops. Okay. So, the new arrival is delirious, and she's drifting in and out of consciousness, but Dragoner, the contract miner, is carrying her through the jungle back towards the cave. The weather's turning. It's starting to rain. How are you feeling, Psy Angel? Much better. In a little bit of pain, but otherwise okay. So, Dr. Frosty has a minor break risk, still up, yeah, still mourning the death of her boyfriend, her fiancé. We're okay. So for the people just joining, you're looking at the third year, the st well, the midpoint of the third year, uh, for a group of cave people living in the side of a mountain next to a giant lake to the west of us. We're in a jungle biome, so it's quite warm. And we've just had a new arrival. Some stranger has crash-landed from a pod that screamed across the sky, shrouded in flame. How they got inside the metal box, we don't know. But surely Alalim has sent them here for a reason. A Centurio. Uh, so Dr. Frosty hates... Um, uh, prosthetic stuff, so she has a... What's it called again? The trait that says... A body purist. So if I add a peg leg to the doctor, she'll be extremely upset. So Angel asks, who the fuck is that? Her name is Carole. She's in shock. Uh, give her... Well, do we have some? Okay, we're all out of herbal meds? Damn. It's going to take time before these properly come through. Okay. Get her some food. Delicious and nutritious fungus. Everyone likes fungus. I'm sure she'll love it. It glows when you eat it. Mmm, mmm. We kept it next to the uranium. Oh. Carole has recovered and has decided to leave. It's kind of rude, to be honest. No longer incapable of walking. You've decided to leave? Oh my god, you're a cannibal. <laughs> okay. Narrative. The universe was a void. Then, Rototro, bored with eternity, fashioned men, man and woman, from sweat. Through many adventures, sorry, though many adventure, adventurers moved uh, against him, Rotoro prevented them easily, for he was god of creation. The god of creation, Rotoro, ate the bodies of his enemies. Right. What? Well, regardless, after they've woken up, they're presumably going to leave. Do we want a cannibal? They've got so quite some combat abilities. Are they part of a true faction? So, that's their ideologian. Oh, are they part of the Kanto Treaty? Hang on, what does it say? I think they're independent, aren't they? Are they? Space refugee. No, I, I think they're just an independent. Factions. How do, sorry, how do you see that? No role assigned, but... Yeah, I, I, I think they're just an independent. So we could choose to capture them. 
and keep them here. If we wanted to. But that's, that's the question. Do we want to? Yeah, where's the crash landing message? Factions, ideologians. Uh, can I go back over? Is there like a log? History. Messages. So a scout named Caroline is crashing in a transport pod nearby. If she survives the impact, she'll be badly wounded. Caroline is not affiliated with any faction. You can rescue her and hope she joins freely or capture her for recruitment or slavery purposes. Hmm. I don't know. So she could help us. I wouldn't say no. She seems fairly useful. She's not a cannibal by nature, just religion. That's true. So once she's changed religion. It's going to take time, though. Okay. Let's capture her. It'll, it'll upset her. Big time. Okay. So. Uh, I guess we have to... Wait until she's on her feet? Try to arrest... Yeah, draft and then arrest. Let, let her rest for a moment. Well, it's already said that she's decided to leave, so I think she's already on her, on her way out. Okay. Um, alas, I'm afraid to say, folks, but looking at the time, I do need to wrap up the stream momentarily. I've got so much... Well, I've got so much work to do on this bullshittery to get it done. A few more moments. Ah. Copy the settings over this cabinet. And then, since we have this armory in place, let's now... So start removing... Is anyone we wearing any body armor that will slow everyone down? So you are. So Philip, could you please go inside? Same with you, Ashes. So if you're wearing any armor please go and place it in this room okay so flat jacket remove so that should speed up your movement I believe let's just check so hang on bio health stats eating speed where's your movement speed Global work speed, 100%. Smelting. Uh, move speed. So three point... Okay, there we go. So what's it say there? Sorry. A speed of movement in cells per second. Base value, 4.60. Relevant gear... So flak vest, reducing it by 0 0.1. Okay, so collectively it's stacking. Final value, 3.43, down from 4.60. Yeah, so just remove your armor until you need it. Cool. Lovely. You can keep the hat. Way faster. Now that you're not burdened by that. So hang on. Plate steel plate armor here. How does it change for you? So gecko here. Uh move speed. Four point six zero has been taken down to uh two point nine eight. Okay, so yeah. Take off that plate armor. There we 
go. Cool. And then switch over to so nudist uh, clear forced assignments for Philip. Oh no, wait, you want the war mask, don't you? I'll just leave it. No, no. Clear force, clear force. Just have everyone assigned to a worker apart from Mirai, who's a nudist. There we go. Right, so watch the prisoner Carolay to make sure that if they attempt to leave, we'll have to arrest them. Mole, you're about to have company. His resistance is steadily being worked down. I should have a soldier ready at all times? Maybe, thinking about it. Maybe, maybe Nickel Dickel will be a good candidate. Yeah, you could... Yeah. Make sure that Nickel Dickel, the muscle, is always ready at the very least. Okay. So, yeah, so far we continue to, uh... Oh no! Carolee has gotten sick from, from an infection in her torso. So, she's going to need... Damn. So we can't amputate that. She's going to have to have the decent meds to get over that. Right. So, that will need to get treated. Dragoner, would you mind? Uh, please wash your hands after handling a dead rat. Okay, copy those settings over to that. Oh no, leave that. It's just weapon systems. Uh, is anyone free? Power conduit, geckos over there. Uh, would you mind... Um, put them onto the shelving units. We're going to need more of those. Okay. Yeah. No, not enough room. Where are you going? There we go. Cool. So in a pinch, we'll just grab our weapons, grab our equipment. So Dragoner, the contract miner and doctor, enters the infirmary and starts trying to treat Carolee's infection. Dr. Frosty, having lost her boyfriend, her fiancé, is still in mourning. She's also quite hungry. Yeah, she'll be fine. The flak vest will go in storage, at least until we've managed to get the, uh, the new cabinet in. Okay. So, most of the tribe are going off to bed, so... Right. So, thank you for watching, everyone. I'm probably going to leave it there because I've, I do have lots to edit today. But I hope you enjoyed the show. So, this has been a bit of RimWorld. If you don't have RimWorld, I very strongly recommend it. It's certainly one of the finer games on Steam. So, an adventure game with random events where you find yourself getting attached to your colonists and you see them go through their trials and tribulations. So we have a forager, we have a builder, we have a nudist, we have a tribal chief, we have a shaman who's terrible at her job, Nickel Dickel, a marine, Dr. Frosty, the one-legged mourning fiancé, now widow, I suppose. You wouldn't say widow if it's a fiancé, would you? Regardless, solo, single. Hey, you're single! Dragoner, the contract miner, and Space Gecko, the grumpy factory worker bandit. So yeah, we're learning to get along in our cave in the darkness. So, I'll be back this evening, I have no doubt. Uh, until then, have a lovely afternoon. I'm going to go and keep editing Divinity Bullshittery Part 3. I've still got quite a lot to do. In three days of work, I should have the...
principal editing finished, so everything should be in Adobe After Effects, at least in some form. And I'll be, I'll be beginning the quality assurance where I go through, make a list of things I need to fix, uh, render it, watch it again, render it, watch it again. Uh, a polishing process, basically. So that's the plan. Right. So let me have a look and see who's doing what. One moment, if you please. So in the clan. Sorry, just taking a moment to open it. So Edberg is doing some Vampire the Masquerade. Joink is doing Seven Days to Die. Uh, Messi is doing Conan. Okay, uh, let me hand you over to Joink then. So Joink is playing Seven Days to Die. So the open world sandbox survival with base building and traders and all that jazz. I'll leave you, yeah, I'll leave you in his company. So this is ZF Joink. Thank you for watching. Have a lovely afternoon.